All right, welcome back to New Zero Lands. Let's talk about charging. All right, imagine you have a gas bike for some reason and you need to fill up. So you roll into a gas station, but the nozzle on the pump is shaped like a square and your bike only takes triangles. It's the same fuel, but you can't physically put the nozzle into your tank. So you have to ride around and find another station before you run out of gas. And you better hope the next one is not shaped like a circle. As crazy as this sounds, that's exactly what it's like having an electric motorcycle. So how did we get here? Why are there so many different plugs? To properly understand, we'll have to go back in time. I'm not going to start with the very first electric cars, or those funky low-powered micro cars from the 70s and 80s. As cool as those were, our story begins in the 90s. The car that really changed everything was the EV1, which you probably saw in the documentary Who Killed the Electric Car. Back then they used these big paddle things that you'd stick into the front of your car. That was called the Magna Charge, or J1773, which was eventually replaced with J1772, which became the AC charging standard. Because there's AC charging and DC charging. I'm going to break it down for you. AC goes from the power outlet, through a charger, then into the battery. The Zero has a charger mounted under the battery. So you just plug that into the wall in your garage, or somewhere else if you do the whole charging cable through the window thing. But the AC outlet in your wall is super low power, which is why it usually takes all night to charge something. If you're out on the road and you want to charge a little faster, you could do it at a campsite. Big plugs like caravans and RVs use, like NEMA 1450 or the Blue Commando. But if you see a charging station in the city and it's AC, it's either J1772 or Menekes Type 2. But that depends on where you are in the world. I'll get to that. Fast forward to 2010, Japan brought out Chatamo, Charge de Move, or Move Using Charge, the first DC charging option. DC means the electricity is going directly from the station into your battery. Suddenly you had so much power that you could charge a car in half an hour. This is what they put on the Nissan Leaf, with a J1772 port right next to it. But Germany was like, why have two cables? Why can't we do AC and DC in the same plug? So we got CCS. So you can plug it in at home or out on the road at a fast charging station. It takes up less space and just looks cleaner. There are actually two different models for this. It depends where you live. In the US you'll get one that's half J1772 and in Europe it works with the Manicus. You'll see these on cars like the BMW i3 or the Volkswagen e-Golf and on the Energica bikes. And then China was like, we want to do electric stuff too, but we want our own plug. For reasons. And then came Tesla, who made a whole new plug. Why not? And these are either AC or DC. The superchargers are DC and Tesla destination chargers are AC, but they look basically the same. Oh, and if this wasn't complicated enough, Teslas in Europe don't actually use Tesla plugs. They use Menekes. So even buying the same car in a different part of the world means it has a totally different charging setup. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Here are all those different types of charging plugs. There's AC from the wall, AC from campsites, AC from charging stations, and then you have DC, Chatamo and Tesla, and then combined charging with AC and DC. So what do you do if you want to drive all the way around the world? Well, you're going to need adapters. Lots and lots of adapters. But going back to our list, if you're on a zero, you can't use DC stations, because zeros are lower voltage and aren't set up for that much charging power. It's kind of like when you travel to another country, you have this big thing that you plug your stuff into, because none of the countries talk to each other and we ended up with totally different outlets. But sometimes you go to a country with higher voltage and you end up lighting your hair dryer on fire. Scale that up to the size of a motorcycle and imagine plugging in a low voltage zero into a high voltage DC station. All of a sudden your $16,000 hair dryer is burning on the side of the road. Right now all of this is really frustrating, I know. What we really need is DC fast charging on a zero. But the main problem is that there's just way too many different plugs out there. We kept making new ones but didn't get rid of the old ones, and every country wants their plug to be the standard, so now the charging infrastructure is a mess. Then again, if you think about the overall timeline of cars and motorcycles, everything I've been talking about has happened in the last 8 years. In 8 years, we've gone from nothing to Tesla, from basically no production EVs to the world's fastest production car, and fastest motorcycle, also electric. Since we haven't been doing this for very long, I guess it makes sense why we're still using so many different plugs. Now we just need all these countries and companies to work together and just pick one style of plug. You can even pick one each for AC and DC, I don't care. But we really need something like this. 
a really big high power USB for our vehicles. But until that day comes, grab all the adapters you can and hit the road. Because why wait? <laughs>